right, Bill. We got another topic that we want to discuss. Yeah, yeah. The Progress 59, that lost communication with Moscow. The Russian Space Agency bill says that their capsule was spinning out of control and it is a total loss. Now scientists, as you know, are tracking the spiraling spacecraft's orbit to figure out where it will plummet to Earth. So the question is, do we know, not sure we know when it is expected to crash or even where, right? Not yet. You know, we've covered quite a few reentries over the years, and what happens is the spacecraft's in a, in a very well-known orbit. They track these things with big radar, so they know exactly where it is. Uh, looking at my map right now, it's over the Pacific Ocean, kind of between Australia and Japan, heading on a northeasterly uh, trajectory. They know where it is. The problem is, as it descends down toward the dense lower atmosphere, the drag increases, this atmospheric friction that is slowing it down, and it does it in an unpredictable way. It's very hard to know exactly when it's going to hit that discernible atmosphere and, and, and really crash to Earth. Right now, the best guess is early Friday morning U.S. time, uh, but there's a big uncertainty here, many hours plus or minus. Uh, we shouldn't have a much better idea by tomorrow. As they get closer in, the tracking improves, and uh, we'll get a better clue there. But right now, it looks like Friday morning or sometime uh, early Friday. I should put it like that, I think. And, Bill, what was inside um, this spacecraft? Well, unfortunately, about 6,000 pounds of propellant, uh, fresh water, supplies for the crew, uh, mm -hmm. even clothing for the next uh, three uh, astronauts that are heading up there later this month. Uh, all of that's a write-off. That's going to burn up in the atmosphere when this thing comes in. And, of course, NASA and the Russians will have to replace it down the road. Now, one thing about it, the space station maintains at least a four-month supply of cargo like that on board at all times, just in case something like this happens. Uh, so they've got a pretty good cushion of supplies on board. There's a SpaceX supply ship that'll go up uh, in June, and then a Japanese cargo ship uh, in August. And at some point this summer, uh, the Russians plan to launch another progress. So it shouldn't take too long to recover, and nobody's, uh, you know, they're not rationing food or anything like that. But obviously losing three tons of supplies is not a small thing. It certainly isn't. It really isn't. And, and Bill, just real quick before we let you go, uh, is this common? Reentries happen all the time. Old spacecraft that run out of gas, they're constantly coming down. You know, we think of space as a vacuum, but there's still a trace amount of atmosphere. And as satellites fly through that, it slows them down and eventually they reenter. Uh, I can remember many satellites that have come in over the years that we've tracked, kind of like this one, wondering when it's come down. Because you always wonder if any debris survives the reentry, could it hit the ground in a populated area? Right. Uh, in this case, only a little bit of debris is expected to survive, and it likely won't, but that's one of the reasons that everybody pays attention to these things. You never know. All right, thank you. CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood, pleasure speaking with you this afternoon. Sure thing.